Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of the Awareness Podcast. My name is Susan Telford and I'm delighted to be here today with Daniel Schmidt. Welcome Dan, it's lovely to see you. Thank you, it's great to be here. Yeah. So um, let me just tell you a little bit about Dan. Um, Dan is the creator of the award-winning film Inner Worlds, Outer Worlds, the Samadhi film series, and also is one of the creators and speakers in the Awakening Mind series that Centre for Awakening are associated with. Daniel created the Samadhi Centre in Ontario, Canada, and the Awaken the World initiative as an outer reflection of his inner world. The purpose of the Awaken the World initiative is to create films and materials which have been made available for free in over 30 languages for the awakening of humanity. It's Dan's intention to convey the one perennial teaching that is inherent within all of the spiritual traditions. His approach combines self-inquiry with traditional forms of meditation so that participants have the opportunity to simultaneously realize their transcendent nature and to purify themselves of conditioned patterns so the human vessel becomes permeable to their true nature. Daniel emphasizes that Samadhi can be experienced not merely as a temporary state, but as a stage of development. The pathless path is to realize an ever deepening developmental process within the self structure and to simultaneously realize the emptiness of the self structure. And when these are realized as one, that is Samadhi. So welcome, Dan. Um, there's so much just in that bio that I, that I feel, you know, we can really dig into. But the first the first question that I really like to ask all of my guests is what does it mean to awaken? First of all, what, what, what does that actually mean? And how has that process played out in your own life? Mm, yeah, thank you. So to awaken, to me, um, it's the most incredible mystery, you know, so no one can tell you what awakening is, you know, no one, no one can, you know, I could, I could use a lot of words um, to describe, you know, what it's like, you know, I could, could say it's kind of like waking from a dream. It's like you've been in a dream and, and suddenly you're not who you think you are, you know, you're, you're not the, the dream character, you're not the, the person or the personality that, that you've been playing all, all your life. Um, but even that, you know, it's, it's, it's conceptual, it's just conceptual, if I, if I use words to describe it, and um, I'm, I'm more of the mindset of, um, like the Buddha never actually said what awakening is. Yes. He, he described it in sort of negative terms. So, um, so he would say um, it's the end of identification with your your character or um, with the phenomena of the mind. Um, it's the end of dreaming. It's the end of suffering um, because you you realize uh, um, when this this sort of flip happens, um, you recognize where that suffering lies. You know, it's always the, the character that, that suffers in life. And that, that character that we've been playing is nothing but a collection of sort of um, preferences and patterns, a sort of re resistance to what is. It's a, it's a, you know, craving and aversion pattern um, of going after things that are, are preferred or the, the wants, you know, and it's resistance to certain things that it doesn't want. Um, so when we disidentify from that, um, you know, there's this um, awakening to consciousness itself. Um, so the, the consciousness 
that that is always here, you know, in the midst of all this changing phenomena, in the midst of this whole human experience, um, when the, the sense of I, of what I am, flips from this character to consciousness itself, then, um, you know, to me, that's, that's really what awakening is. Um, but even as I say these words, you know, it, do, it doesn't benefit anyone just to know that conceptually, um, you know, so that's, that's maybe a nice definition. Um, but what excites me is to create the conditions for people to um, experience this flip for themselves. So to, to have a direct experience of our, our true nature as that consciousness. And so my, my path and my, you know, the whole awaken the world thing, all of that is, is sort of geared towards offering people the tools that will allow them to create those conditions. So, um, so, with, so there's a, a bit of a paradox, the condition self, you know, is the thing that sort of has to let go or, or give up control. So, we, so with, when we're identified with this character, we can't make awakening happen by using that character because that's just creating more activity in the mind. So there's this interesting paradox where we create sort of an interrupt in that pattern and, and that interrupt um, is um, what is usually referred to as sadhana or spiritual practice. Um, and and some people, for some people, life itself will provide an inter interrupt. Sometimes um, things will happen. There can be an event, a trauma, a death, or um, you know, things in life. Will, what, our, our little pattern of who we think we are is going along, and then life provides some interrupt. So. Um, so there can be spontaneous awakenings as well. It's not always um, something that is intentional within a, a practice. Um, so um, you know. So, so there's a there's a couple of things I'd like to pick up on on what you said. Um, you said that we are playing a character, but there's there's a point that we're completely unaware that we're playing a character. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm interested in how how that became obvious to you. What was the thing, you know, you've just said about, you know, there could be an interruption. For me, it was a, a real burnout, a complete six months in bed burnout that, that interrupted my whole way of being. What, what Did you have a, a kind of pattern like that or how was it for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a an extremely, um, you could say, pathological pattern that that was in play within the character. So um, I was I was working in the television industry, um, which was, um, you know, really the the pattern was really strong. The 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 Dan character was going after all of the the aspects of um, you know whatever is in the matrix that that is alluring. You know, going after money relationships, um, trying to, um, you know, excel in, in the delivery of this television series I was working on. So, you know, working 16 hour days and, and, um, and just putting energy into the external. And, and it created this pathological mind body pattern. And, um, you know, some people, it's, it's interesting for me, there was something that with, within this this vessel or this this being that it it just said no that's not happening and and so um, this this sickness state came on where um, it was like a, a all these manifestations of illness like um, type one diabetes rheumatoid arthritis um, digestive issues um, energy energy was just very low um, and and it it was you know, an interrupt in that pattern. It was like the body, the whole, um, you know, I, I almost see it as a, like a spiritual gift that I was given um, yes. at that point in my life where I, I you know, at the time it, 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 it wasn't enjoyable. I was, I was like, oh, I, didn't, I, I just want to get back to that pattern and, and you know, do the things that I, I want to do because I was identified with that, that character. Um, so my idea of healing 
was to be able to go back to the pattern, you know, find, somehow find a way. Me too. To exactly. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, eventually um, I realized, you know, that's not happening and I have to actually learn what's going on here. There's, there's something uh, unfolding here. And, and so the, the illness removed me from that world and, you know, my business, my relationships, all of that. I had to had to let that go and, and sort of turn inward and see, you know, learn how to take care of the, the avatar, you know, this body. I was very disconnected from the body. Um, so there was a, um, a learning process that, that began and, and really, um, you know, the mind was going. I, I, I moved out of Toronto. I was in, you know, the, the heart of the, the matrix and I, I moved into a rural area. Um, beautiful setting. I bought a canoe. I knew, I thought nature is going to heal me and all of this, but I got into nature and, and the mind was still going. It was still pathological. And, and I realized there, there's, there's something, you know, the, the discontent and disconnection and unhappiness that, you know, I'd been blaming on, on my circumstances and my my situation and what i'd got myself into but i realized it's also in here you know i had created this this mind state that was continuing even though i'd removed by myself from the outer circumstances and that's when i i realized um it, it drew me to meditation um just out of sort of desperation i i came to desk to um, meditation to, to find the off button for, for that pathological mind and um, ended up going into Vipassana meditation um, into a 10-day retreat where they, they really create these, these conditions of no escape for that mind and, um, and on my first retreat I had a, um, a samadhi experience so not a, not a full awakening to who I was, but a more like a merging experience. So experiencing myself as everything, as as energy, as the universe. Um, you know, the the most it was a, the most beautiful peak experience, which at that time was not even on my radar. Um, I, I just wanted the off button. I just wanted to get a good <laughs> night's sleep, kind of thing. So, um, so so this you know this samadhi experience blew my entire worldview right open and and um and instantly the the seeker was born in me i wanted to you know the character um who had experienced this thought okay i have to find a way to live there or make this permanent and and um but i was still at that time fully identified with the character um so the seeking began and and for many years i explored every tradition, every sutra, every thing that I could. And, and this seeker kept getting stronger, you know, more, more, the ego became a more spiritualized ego, learning everything um, about samadhi and about spirituality, but also getting farther and farther away from that initial experience or an initial glimpse that, that was had. And, um, and it wasn't until later that, you know, the paradox or the, you know, the truth of what's actually going on, this, this mechanism of how awakening works be, be, was, was revealed um, later when that, that seeker eventually had to give up its futile efforts to, to try and attain samadhi. And, and it was in that, that surrender that, um, you know. And what did that feel like for you? Because, you know, we have, we have, um, you know, the, the conditioned self kind of comes to the end of it so in whatever way it comes to the end of, of um, trying to get things from from the outside or, you know, it burns itself out in, in some way sometimes yeah. mm -hmm. and then the spiritual ego starts to be born because as you say we may have some kind of experience and then we think oh that was wonderful i want that back how do i get that back mm -hmm. and so it starts all of that stuff as as you just said but then it burns itself out too you get to the point where you think i can't do this actually 
I can, I've, what I found for myself was I applied my type A personality that I'd applied to my career to the spiritual search. I just did the very same thing all over again. Yeah, exactly. But then I thought, well, well, well what now? What now? So, so when you got to that point of knowing that I can't actually do this, I can't, you know, I've, yeah. I've done all the seeking that I, that I could ever do. Now what? What happened yeah. at that moment? Yeah, so that that it's an incredible moment. So yes. for me, it was it was at a Zen center, and I, I went into the Zen center. I was on a mission. It was one of the, the session. It was the most you know incredible um, conditions of no escape. So they, they it's actually quite brilliant how they structure it because you're you're almost guaranteed to fail. You know and and whatever you think meditation is, whatever whatever that spiritual ego thinks it's going to do in that retreat, it's going to eventually hit, hit a wall. So so for me, you know, it was there was a devastation in that, you know, it was realizing well, I, like I'm failing everything I've learned um, that that I that I was identified with um, that, you know, there was a humbling, a, a serious humbling where it, you know, I realized I, I don't know anything you know in that little that little eye um it can't make anything happen it can't whatever that samadhi experience was it there was an absolute failure to to realize that and and all the books and teachings and things that i'd learned you know are, are of no value you know it comes down to me sitting on this cushion you know whatever the mind thinks it's supposed to be doing there it it you know, it tried everything, and 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 there's just this energy building and this um, pain and and um, you know this friction within the self structure, and and something has to give when that that happens. It's like this, um, you know, either either the, the ego had to had to get out of there and preserve itself, you know, and stay alive, or it had had to die, you know, had to give up. Um, so there there was a sort of humbling and, and, and a devastation within that little eye. Mm -hmm. um, and, and all through this process, um, you know, the teacher was, was saying, um, you know, you can just give up the struggle. You can stop, you, you know, just recognize, see who is struggling, you know, and, and- But then does the mind not come in and say, well, how do I do that then? Yeah, the, how, the mind- How do I give that up? The mind is struggling to give up the struggle, you know, and, and this is the, the, the surrender paradox, you know, whatever the mind thinks surrender is, you know, it's it thinks there's something for it to do it, you know, the, the conditioned mind, the last thing it wants to do is just give up its control. So even even when you say surrender, the mind jumps in and, and thinks there's something that I have to do to surrender, you know, I have to actually relax or or do something but it's just another control mechanism whatever that concept of surrender is so so a true surrender is is like a death you know they say you know it's like like the it's dying before you die you know it's it's um yeah there's this mystery that happens when you really put yourself into these conditions of no escape and the, um, this what unfolds, this sort of alchemy that unfolds, um, it gets it gets very real. It gets you know you can't just sort of cruise through in this this witnessing position, but there's a there's a um, you know that wherever that eye is entangled, you know for some people it's there, there's pain in the body. There's there's a lot of different hindrances for different people that come up in this process. So. Um, so, you know, whether you call this process um, meditation or, or self-inquiry, you know, moving through a dark night of the soul, um, there's a, um, this disentangling that happens and the mind will put up these different hindrances or different forms of resistance. So um, for me in that experience, it was pain in the body. There was just an unbelievable amount of pain. It was almost like supernatural pain. It, what, it didn't make any sense. I'm just sitting on this cushion. Actual physical pain. Physical pain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah in the body. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just like the 
um, a pain in the solar plexus, um, just a pain, you know, in the in the knee, as if somebody were driving a a sword into my the knee, and and it, it didn't make any sense because I'm just I'm if you look at what's happening, you know, the body's just sitting peacefully on this cushion and not having any physiological response as it would if there were actual physical pain yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and the crazy thing is you get up from the cushion and the pain's gone walk away <laughs> yeah so so in the the traditions the you know these are the the samskaras mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. these these um habit patterns of craving and aversion and when when we start to interrupt our usual pattern these these samskaras start to come to the surface so, um, so for me, the, the predominant one was pain, but for other people, it's different. Um, some people will have, um, you know, sometimes it's tiredness. This incredible tiredness will come up in the body and it, it's, it doesn't make any sense to the mind, but it's just the, um, the mind's defense mechanism. You know, so people will sometimes have to move through, through tiredness um, or, or confusion or um, sometimes desires will come up where, um, you know, there can be all kinds of phenomena in the mind. The mind will use every trick in, in the book. You know, it'll sometimes move through different samskaras um, in, in order to interrupt this, this process um, because the, it is, there really is a process to sadhana. There's an energy that starts to build um, when, when the energy is not going into that conditioned mind um you know then the energy becomes free and 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 there can be this um sort of space where awakening is more likely to happen um we're, we're sort of creating these conditions of of openness and um you know a a, a mind that is like a, a don't know mind it's a a dropped off mind or an open mind um where you know in that space of stillness and presence um, that that flip, that awakening, um, is is much more likely to happen. Um, so so um, you know in the self inquiry retreats and um, you know the really deep meditation practices, we come face to face with whatever is in the unconscious. You know whatever's in play in in um, these these. Um, uh, you know realms where we you know whatever we've experienced in life whether it's traumas or um, incomplete experiences where we've we've had some charge you know in life like the the charge of an experience is strong and we weren't able to process it or experience it fully in the moment so it gets pushed into the unconscious and then there's this little program that's running so um so the sadhana is you know making these unconscious programs conscious, bringing them up to the surface, and it's and it's really done just by by being present. You know the the whole process in in sadhana is to remain present um, in an uninterrupted way without engaging in those patterns, without giving energy to the, the mind. So the the mind is already in motion. And really, all we're doing in the sadhana is making it conscious. We're, we're coming to see what is already in play within the self-structure. And once it's made conscious, then, then it can release. Then, then that energy can be let go. You know, so it's, it's kind of like, you know, we've, we've had this contraction. It's like we're holding a fist, you know, contracting it, and we're, we don't even realize it. And then eventually we, we bring consciousness to it and it's like, ah, oh, I can, I, okay. Then, you know, once it's actually made conscious, then it, it will just automatically drop. Yeah. So if, if people who are listening are, 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 are recognizing that they're, they're at that kind of place where they've been seeking for a long time and, and they have a sense of, it's not working or, you know, often I hear people say, I've been on a spiritual path for 30 years and yet I'm not experiencing joy or, or bliss or, or whatever. And there's yeah. a couple of things in that because I don't necessarily think that, that that's, all, that's all you ever experience after awakening. But when people are at that stage, um, 
as you said, either the ego can just try and preserve itself and that looks like, well, this path's not for me. And it could be going on to a different path now to see if this teacher is going to be the one. But what would you, what would you say to people um, who are at least willing to not give up or even to know that they're not doing something wrong because often i hear that from people too that it's not working for me mm -hmm. so when they're just at that point of you know shit's getting real to put to put it like that you know mm -hmm. what, what would you say to somebody like that dan yeah yeah that's a great question so for me you know what often i see you know in our, our retreats and in our um you know the online sadhana that, that we've started doing as well you know a lot of people have had glimpses or or more than glimpses they've had awakenings um but they they fall into this um i've got it and i lost it kind of mm -hmm. kind of yeah. thing and and you know people spend you know a lot of time searching for you know this teacher or that teacher this technique that technique and and um eventually people come to the place where they realize it's not, there, there's nothing out there. There's nothing more I can do. There's no, no teaching, no, no, um, you know, there's, I, it, I've heard it all, you know, and, but yet I, I still um, suffer. There's still suffering. There's still identification. Um, and so what I've, what I've realized the most, the most powerful thing that I've, realized on my own path and um, you know what I've sort of put in place with with awaken the world is you know what are the optimal conditions for creating a, a space where we can really truly come to the end of seeking you know where where that you know we might know conceptually there's you know I, I can learn everything on the intellectual level. That's not going to do it. What I want is a direct knowing, a con, you know, a true knowing of, of who I am. And what, what I've realized is that that end of seeking, um, for most people, it's, it takes an incredible effort. And, it, and it's, a, it's, a type, it's a type of effort that is very unique because it's not an effort to do something. It's not. It's not the ego's effort. It's. It's almost like um, um, there's. There's something deeper. You know. To me, there's. There's a. There's something in a human being. In. In. You know. In everything. Like to me, there's something that is calling us back to the source. You know. There's something that. That. You know. Wh whoever's watching this video. Um, you know. There's something drawing them to. To be free of suffering, to to realize their their divinity, however however you want to say it, um, you know. But there's there's something that is is like an energy, a, a pull to union, and you know the the but the challenge is you know we feel that in the deepest part of our being that that longing for union, and then the mind will say, how do I do it? You know, how do I make that happen? And as soon as the mind gets in there, it's been co-opted, you know, yeah. then, then the energy goes back into the mind. So for me, what, what seems, you know, from what I've witnessed in people going through this process of, of um, engaging in, in sadhana, um, it takes an incredible um, sort of perseverance or surrender to that longing surrender to that energy um you could say surrender to spirit or wh whatever word you want to give that but there's there's a um putting yourself in a situation you know where like in our self-inquiry retreats for example um there's a over and over we we catch the mind you know trying to jump in we over and over see the delusion of the mind thinking that it has to do something or it's trying to control or manipulate and and it's a constant dropping of that that mind and and if we if we can engage in a constant dropping single pointedly you know engaged in this process 
there can be a sort of rewiring that starts to happen, you know, deep within the self structure, and and the mind can learn to let go. It can it can learn, you know, once and for all, truly that you know it it doesn't need to make awakening happen, or it can't hold on to awakening. It can't it can't hang on to it because it's the truth of who you are is not even a state. It's it's just the truth of who you are. It's the, the awareness that is ever present. But when you know, the, I think the confusion and and delusion that happens for everyone on the path is that when when we have an awakening, we get a glimpse or or you know a full awakening. It's accompanied by a state, you know, and and a, and there's phenomena with it, mm-hmm. and and it's usually awesome you know it's usually very pleasurable phenomena and and the mind confuses that phenomena and that that state and that that energy um with you know it thinks that it has to get that back um in order to you know stay awake in in order to um you, you know it be in this 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 awakened state but the awakening isn't the state the state you know on in within the human self structure you know on one end we can we can be identified with form and the other we can be in this samadhi state a, to- a state of total union and bliss with everything and and but that's all within the conditioned self but but there's an awareness um that is there no matter where where that what's happening on that continuum and and if we if the sense of i flips to that awareness then it actually doesn't matter what's happening within the self structure and 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 so to me that's what we want we we want to get to a point where that sense of i has flipped like we know once and for all who we are you know the truth of who we are that i'm not this this character and and um then it doesn't matter you know the character is going to go through whatever it's going to go through and and on on this continuum there will be you know samadhi states there'll be um contracted more dense states and um but um it can just go through its evolutionary process and and when we we disentangle that sense of i from that character the energy is more free it's it's going to go through it's evolution no matter what so if we're identified with it it just goes through it more slowly there's more contraction but if that sense of i is is disidentified it just goes through that evolutionary process more quickly mm. um, so so to me that you know every, everything that we're doing in our retreats and and you know in these practices is to just create this the conditions where that that sense of i will flip and and the the only thing for the mind to know or learn you know in this process is its its own limitation in that process you know just to get get itself out of the way and learn that okay it's actually you know it's safe for me to just let go of control and stop seeking stop controlling um stop doing something that's going to lead to some state or something in the future and and when it can finally do that that when the mind is finally dropped off then who who remains you know in that in that stillness in that presence and and to me that's you know, you know, that's it, a week to me yeah yeah <laughs> and, it, and to me it, it's just it's a very it's the most simple thing because it's you know there it's and it's the last thing that the mind wants to do you know is is to give up that control um but so it's so simple that there there's actually nothing to do and yet it's not easy because the mind has this inertia the mind has this this momentum of staying in motion and and um so so there's you know it's like we're pulling the plug on a fan and that fan is just going to keep going and going you know even after we've pulled the plug and to me the the practice is to stay in that space let let the fan run down you know without pl- pulling it it's so plug it back in 
so, <laughs> it's so tempting to plug it back in, yeah. you know, because the mind is like, okay, this this sucks. This is not fun. You know, there's samskaras coming up. It's not comfortable. Um, and the, the, it's, the mind gets desperate, you know, especially as the fan gets slower and slower and slower. But the mind thinks, oh, you know, this is scary. The fear will come up. It's like, I'm, I'm going to, I have to really let go. Like, what's going to happen here, you know? And, and really serious fear can come up for people in this process where um, the fear can become hyper real almost. It's, it's um, very, very powerful. And so the, the temptation to plug the fan back in and distract ourselves in some way or activate the pattern or, you know, if we're engaged in, in you know, a self-inquiry, then the mind might think, okay, I'm, maybe maybe it's better if I just go and watch another video about awakening. I'm, but, you know, this is this is too uncomfortable. This is, you know, something happening here. It's unfamiliar. And, and so we, there, there has to be this willingness to truly go into the unknown because the mind literally can't know what awakening is you know it it's and it's in the, the not knowing that it, it you know the acceptance of the not knowing and the willingness to just surrender um that this this possibility is there yeah i think as well that um that almost that almost confirms that it's not that, that it's kind of got a life of its own or an energy of its own um, because the, the the mind so wants to to take back control and yet there's this longing there was the word you used but there's there's this there's this kind of impetus I don't know what the word is impulse something that's that's moving almost while while your mind's still freaking out you know while while the mind's still trying to to get back um control mm -hmm. um i think i really i really want you to i know you've already spoken about this but i just want to go back to the point about the the states that people can when they have a glimpse say um, and that's accompanied in the body mind by a sense of relaxation or spaciousness or or bliss or joy and you often hear people say it lasted two weeks and then it went away and yeah. um, i think it's really important to to talk about how that's just that's just the way the the body mind is responding to to that glimpse it's not actually th the state of of the awakened one see mm -hmm. the, the clumsy mm -hmm. language but you know what i'm asking you yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's it so uh, yeah it's so important you know to separate the phenomena and you know in in buddhism they they have um i, I love the traditions where they, they've actually you know sort of um pointed out you know, actual stages of, of um, progression in, in um, this sort of process that's happening within the self structure. So, so there, there's these two things that are, are um, in play, you know, there's, there's the flip to pure awareness, you know, recognizing our true nature. So um, in Buddhism, they, they call this prajna paramita, which is, you know, the recognition of our true nature of our, our Buddha nature, you know, and to me, that is the most important thing. Like once, once we know who we are, um, then, um, you know, that that's the liberation, but yet at the same time, the self structure is going through stages of, of a sort of purification as well, which when we have an awakening that that purification actually accelerates. So, the, so whatever remaining samskaras are there, they're, they're going to come up to the surface. So, so after an initial awakening, you know, people have this expectation. It's like, okay, life is going to be good. That's it. Now you know, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> it's, but it's the opposite, actually. Um, you know, all the remaining stuff that, that has not been purified, you know, your patterns are going to be that much more obvious, mm -hmm. um, especially if you, you know, the, the two-week 
thing, you know, where, you know, people will have an awakening, they're in this um, state where their energy is free of the pattern, so it's very blissful. There's a, a sense of, of ease, but then, you know, if whatever hasn't been purified, those patterns will, will reemerge, you know, life will, will all offer the triggers, you know, to reactivate those patterns. Um, and then people will think I'm losing it. I'm failing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, like, I, I got to get, get back. But, but it's actually the, the, what's unfolding is, is perfect for the path. Um, it's an opportunity when those patterns reemerge um, to, to make them fully conscious, um, to experience them fully. So it's not, it's not comfortable, you know, these depending on what's in the unconscious, you know, for some people, um, after an awakening, there can be the space where the, the deepest samskaras and traumas or, um, you know, not fully experienced patterns will come to the surface. So there, there can be confusion for people where they, they think, you know, like, I, I was just in this beautiful state and, and now I'm in hell again. You know, what's this about? Worse than before. <laughs> Worse than before, yeah. It's like now I'm, I'm actually in touch with the, the deepest pain and the, the deepest suffering and identification. And, and it's an opportunity to see and free the energy from the unconscious and, and to allow that fully. Because in, in whatever caused that imprint in the unconscious, we couldn't at that time, maybe, maybe we were a little kid, you know, sometimes these things are even pre-verbal, they're, they're before language is even there, so we can't, we don't even know what that is sometimes coming up. Sometimes we'll, we'll know it's a trauma or it's from, there might what be about a... ancestral or collective? Do you think there's yeah. part of that too? Absolutely. There's yeah. no families pass on these mm -hmm. these um, traumas and, and um, yeah, ancestral traumas. You know, if we're if we're in a culture where certain things are are ingrained, you know, if you look at the Middle East, what's happening yeah. there, the generations of trauma and suffering, it's it's very very difficult to disentangle from that. So um, so to to be able to feel that and to process it, allow it fully, you know, um, the ego, the ego structure is always a reaction against what is, you know, and, and when we, we react to whatever is in play, it perpetuates the ego, it gives it power. So if we can, if we can just allow whatever is in the unconscious to come up fully, that's how this sort of disentangling works. And, and then the energy becomes free of that pattern and and there's there's different um you know different sort of lenses that we can use to look at what these these samskaras or conditioned patterns are so you know one one sort of lens is to see it as um you know something that can be sort of burned up or you know um it's like a a, a pattern that's in play that um you know we can we can sort of um, free the energy from it and it's you know it's like a, a, a weed in the garden and when you, you don't uh, you don't give it any nutrition or energy then it'll, it'll just sort of die out um, but there are other ways of looking at it you know like we know we know there you know these patterns are the mind is is like this web of neuroplasticity and and um, you know it is like a living thing so sometimes we can whatever those patterns are we can sort of merge them as well or we can grow them in a new direction we can we can start to take aspects of that self structure that are sort of pathological and and sort of reintegrate them in life as well so there there are different lenses and in psychology they have um you know these different um different sort of ways of, of working with the unconscious and and i think all of those lenses have um you know there there are sort of insights that are unique to some of these these different lenses as well so so we can start to um you know work on different levels you know we can work directly within the body you know through some sort of sadhana but then we start to see how these 
these um, patterns are actually playing out in our life and to see you know what is actually moving us in our life what what actually makes me me do things in my life what's my motivation what's you know um what are my fears what are the the protectors that are you know guarding my heart and keeping me from from being open and and we, we can start to explore in, in on, on all these different levels and so it's not it's not just localized to you know our, our cushion practice or our you know self-inquiry dyads it, it, life itself becomes the sort of lab so at some at some points um therapy or therapeutic types of things can be useful is that is that what you're saying yeah like yeah. like what or or i i think um just a, a, a willingness to um explore I, you know like i i think that the thing that people sometimes fall into in in um you know, doing practices that, that will lead to awakening. It, like sometimes people will think, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go in and purify my samskaras. You know, I'm going to face my demons, face, face whatever's in the unconscious. And, and there, there are different sort of um, ways of having, of relating to that process. So, you know, like one, one, way of relating is you know i'm going to conquer my demons but i think uh, um when we really go into it um we we see that these are just un un unintegrated parts of ourself so so we we really don't we don't want to go to battle with ourself yeah. you know to the me, lost children i like to call them yeah yeah exactly <laughs> So, so we, we, you know, it's just, it, it's literally just wiring that has its own autonomy and its own um, sort of purpose. And, and so, um, so I think it, it can be helpful to examine sort of, you know, our relationship or, you know, what, what beliefs or expectations are in play when we enter into sadhana, you know, do I have these beliefs that you know something has to be conquered or something has to be purified you know and and what does that actually mean you know and if if i can actually see the beliefs that are in play right from the beginning and kind of drop them um i think the 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 energy itself you know um has its own intelligence and so the more i can see my beliefs that are in play and, and kind of drop them and get them out of the way, I can allow this process to unfold more, more clearly. Um, so, so for, you know, therapy, um, I mean, I've done therapy in my long in, ago in my past. Um, I think some of these things can be um, great tools, you know, as maybe stepping stones along the way to, um, to kind of interrupt the, you know the patterns especially if there are really strong patterns in play um, there can be different modalities and different tools to to kind of get inside the pattern and, and see it um, so you know I, I think it's it's each person has to kind of find what those tools are on their path so for for one person it might be um, you know a, a psychological exploration another maybe breath work will be a, an entry point into the unconscious and seeing what what is in play and other people entheogens might open i was up. going to ask you about that that was something mm -hmm. a question that i wanted to ask you what is the role of um i don't know that word entheogens yeah so yeah. or yeah so plant medicine plant or, medicine yeah yeah, yeah things so, like psilocybin or yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so entheogen just means um, sort of, um, um, you know, awakening the um, the divinity. You know, the entheogen. You know, theo is like the god. theology. You know, the awakening the god within or awakening the the divine within. And yeah. so, so there, you know, different. Uh, what effect do they have though? What physiological effect do they have that leads to that experience? Mm -hmm. So it's hard to generalize, but in general, um, so I, I, I kind of like um, Aldous Huxley um, had a, a way of speaking about entheogens and um, 
he said, um, you know, the, the conditioned mind is like a reducing valve. You know, so our, all of our wiring apparatus and our filters within the self structure are like this reducing valve. And so we, um, you know, he talks about mind at large. So there's, there's this whole possibility for human experience out there. If the mind is blown wide open, um, you know, there's, there's this mind at large, which is all that is, you know, the, if we're, if we're fully open as that big mind, um, then, um, you know, we're sort of optimizing the human experience. We're, we're, we're taking it all in, you know, and, and our self structure, um, is this reducing valve. So we, we take mind at large and we filter it and, and we, um, we reduce it down to, you know, most people reducing it down to the mental and physical experience, you know, so most people are living on, you know, through, through their thoughts and their, their sensations, essentially. So, um, but there are these other levels, you know, and, and all the traditions describe these, these other levels of um, experience of energy, experience of um, other levels of mind, other dimensions, spiritual levels, um, you know, the astral, higher and lower astral, the causal level, the, the dharmakaya, whatever you want to call it. Um, so there are these, these other dimensions that we can open up to. And so, so there are all different tools that can open us up to that. So, you know, breath work can, can, can start to unfilter us. You know, it can very quickly build energy um, and, and the energy can break through to these other levels. Um, and uh, plant medicines um, operate in a, a similar way where the, the filter is dropped. And to me, it can be, um, for me, it was very beneficial. I was, a, I was a total left brain, you know, rational, analytical guy. And, and um, at one point, um, you know, I, I, I think ayahuasca was my first experience and, and it just unfiltered, you know, and, and it was like, wow, like it's, it's, um, you know, opened up the, you know, Aldous Huxley had this phrase like opening the doors of perception, you know, so, so the sense gates and, you know, the energy becomes free and, and it just shows you that there's, there's so much more that we're, we're, um, you know, most of our human experience is operating on this, this little frequency band mm -hmm. here. And, and, and reality is just, uh, you know, all these other aspects of, of possibility for the human experience. And, you know, the, the danger with all of this, of course, this is, this is the show, right? This is, this is Maya, you know, in its full expression. So, so it's still Maya. It's still, you know, the, the um, play of changing form, you know, so the, so the one experiencing it the, the the awareness that's experiencing it um you know we can we can um get identified you know at any level as well so we have to be careful with these these tools when we open up to these new um dimensions you know the the conditioned self can you know grab onto that and we can create a whole new identity around that you know sometimes we, we go through a development process where, you know, maybe, maybe the third eye will open. We, we develop in, intuition faculties. And, and before we know it, you know, that, that becomes a whole new identity and we're, we're exploring that dimension. So instead of exploring, you know, vertically and, and growing, you know, in an evolutionary way, we're, we're sort of going horizontal. We're just exploring now this new level and, no and, um, yeah. and to me, it's, there's no problem with that. To me, it's like a, it's like a tree that's growing, like a tree doesn't just grow straight up, you know, to, yeah. to the sky, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> here and there. So there's no problem with that. But I think it's, it's good to make it conscious, you know, to um, not get caught, you know, in, you know, like plant medicine, psychedelics, people can, can totally form attachments to those things they can start seeking experiences seeking bliss you know and and it's just another control mechanism for the ego so so i think we can use them as an interrupt and and as a 
an overall benefit on the path, but, but also it's very important to not get caught in that trap. Yeah. Thank you. So um, in March, you're coming to Centre for Awakening to teach four classes. Yes, um, yes. Title is Letting Stillness Reveal Itself. So I wanted to ask you um, what these classes are about, who they're for, and what people might expect by... Mm -hmm. Why, why would they come? Mm -hmm. What are they going to get? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm laughing well, at my own question yeah. <laughs> from our whole get? conversation. <laughs> and now yeah. I'm saying, what are they going to get? <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely nothing. There's, yeah, there's exactly. Nothing, nothing to get. But, you know, that's a, that's a very Eckhart Tolle kind of answer. But, but yeah, so, so what, I, what I love to do, um, you know, is, is to create these conditions where you know awakening is more likely to happen so um so it'll it'll be sort of structured as a um an inquiry and and we'll be going through in in stages of you know really following sort of the same thing that happens in a self inquiry retreat so so I'll be um offering sort of pointers so I'm I'm not going to be you know giving techniques or or you know, getting people to do anything, but maybe just just offering pointers to, um, you know, observing the conditioned mind at the beginning, seeing what what is in play. Um, so there'll there'll be an opportunity to um, engage in in inquiry together, um, and as we do this, um, you know, the longer we stay in presence together, um, the um, you know, different forms of resistance typically will, will come to the surface. Um, so we'll explore that. Then we'll explore the, um, you know, the, the hindrances or the, you know, the things that are coming up. And there'll, there'll be an opportunity to, um, to sort of stay in stillness together and then uh, an opportunity to um, do like a Q&A as well to, you know, really, really try and, and bring light to what is in play in the conditioned mind. Um, and then, you know, um, as we move through the, the four classes, um, allowing, um, you know, just allowing this, this process to unfold, allowing the, the um, energy to become free of the conditioned patterns, and then, um, and then inquiring into, you know, the one that is aware of of this whole, you know, changing phenomena that's unfolding, so we'll we'll be sort of working in in two dimensions, you know, directly inquiring into who we are, um, and then allowing the phenomena within the self structure to be cleared. Um, so there's this this clearing process and and a, a direct inquiry into who we are, and and eventually these these two things. Um, you know, hopefully start to converge, you know, or we, we can get a sense of that, that converging, um, you know, and, and what, what really has to happen in order to let go of that seeking and that, that doing mind. Um, so if, there, if there's one thing I, I really want to help to convey, you know, the thing that has made all the difference for me is to, to see, you know, that that pathological doer, that doing mind, and reveal it, you know, on hopefully increasingly unconscious levels, making those unconscious patterns of doing and seeking conscious so that they can be dropped and, and coming into stillness then. So we, you know, we can't make this stillness is like the byproduct of this, this process. So. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Um, so, um, I think maybe um, it's people are not always able to. I know in in your New Year retreat, for example, it was a seven day very intensive process, and that's that's not always possible for people to to do. So, um, this feels as though it's an opportunity for people to um, have a bit of that 
experience and and be in that um, environment. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. To me, it's really like a micro version yeah. of, of that longer yeah. retreat. Yeah. So yeah. It, it really, really, the the same kind of process. And I, and I think the benefit is, um, you know, there there's a huge benefit to diving in and really creating those conditions. Um, but also in on a smaller level, it can start to unlock, you know, or loosen the bonds within the self structure and start to free the energy. And then, um, yeah, it, it may, you know, kindle something within mm -hmm. people to to then go into the, the deeper exploration. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and to do all of that um, with a teacher and in the in it in with the support of a community you know this is this is being offered within our evolve community um i think that's important as well um to to have that support um from like-minded people and i think you know what's really come come up for me uh, uh, during this hour that we've spoken dan is is when we come to that end of seeking point where it almost feels like the road forks as if you could just think, well, this didn't work and I'm just going to go back to, you know, whatever, my old life. I'm done with this spiritual stuff. It didn't work. Or yeah. you you go down the other fork where um, you see what, what comes after the end of seeking, that you're willing to to just stay and, and just be willing to see what is beyond the end of seeking. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And to me, that, that the, the beginning of, you know, true meditation is, is when that, that mind that's doing something and seeking, you know, that's when meditation really happens. Then we know what meditation is. We're, we're just being. Then it, it opens up a whole different sort of path where there's no longer a need to do something or find something. The, the level of mind is is seen for what it is you know it's just a, a facsimile of of a, a deeper more direct connection with life yeah. and then then things um open up you know for me creativity opened up um i was a math teacher left brain as well and started to write poetry mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yeah. The, 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 oh, I'm it. fascinated mm -hmm. by that. Um, you know, when people are in the shower and they have those, they have those ideas, or or composers um, just feel the music just come. That kind of download, that that access to. I've actually started calling that the seventh sense. <laughs> <laughs> this, you know, you're talking about Ald Aldous Huxley saying about the, you know, the mind at large, having access to that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. And, and to me, the, the connection to that, you know, if our if our energy is just going into our little pathological pattern, then it's like we never connect to that big mind, you know, yeah. but if we if we can learn to drop, you know, that that endless doing then the energy is free and it, it it's the most natural thing it just does it automatically it's just an opening to these other levels and yeah people you know to me the this the stillness of that little mind you know is the gateway to the freeing of that energy and and an opening to all creative potential all possibilities yeah, yeah. that's that's the beauty you know and 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 to a direct connection with life as well so if we're not filtering through this, you know, the senses, um, you know, in self-inquiry world, we talk about direct experiences and people start to open more and more to direct experiences. So, so instead of experiencing another person through my, you know, my memory and my, my judgments in my past, but I'm, I'm seeing them absolutely brand new in the moment. You know, or seeing anything, seeing, you know, having a shower, you know, for the first time, you know, without <laughs> without the filtering mechanism, it's, you know, a direct experience of, of anything is is almost a divine revelation. You know, it, 
it is a divine revelation yeah. you know to see a tree without the label of a tree you know without without this concept you know but to be in presence directly energetically with whatever it is that's unfolding in life um you know that's what this path is about to me is you know mm -hmm. learning to unfilter yeah perfect well it's been wonderful talking to you dan and i'm so looking forward uh, to your classes so for people listening i'll put a link um, for more information on these classes they begin march the 4th uh, they're live on zoom uh, i don't know if that's an oxymoron actually live on zoom <laughs> called letting stillness reveal itself um so it final words dan I just want to say thanks. I, I see, you know, there's so many synergies um, between what you're doing and the Awaken the World initiative. Um, yeah. The same teachers, the same, the same message, just you know, the same pointers happening. Um, so I'm, I'm just excited about the collaboration, and um, yeah, I'm just very grateful for for the connection. And yeah, for being me here. too. Thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you everyone for listening. Bye-bye.